hello again. This is Christy Friesen, your polymer clay guru for the day, and we are going to learn yet another secret to polymer clay. Now, this one actually combines some of the secrets we've already learned in this series, but we're going to put them together in a little different way, and we're going to make a donut, a calorieless donut. So you can eat, wear as many of these as you want, and it will not make your butt look fat. So that's good. All right, so I am here at the Fire Mountain Gems and Beads Jewelry Making Studio, and we are going to jump right in to a new project with polymer clay and just create something fun. And I call this one uh, a round and around, but mostly because you don't always want to say that you're making a donut because people get confused. But essentially, that's what it is. We're going to make a round donut shape from clay that can be used as like a focal piece in a lariat style or a pendant. Uh, style necklace, which is really fun. All right, so what I want to do first is I want to make a base color clay to make my donut shape. So when you weren't looking, I went and got my clays and I mixed some colors together. I made something purple because that's what I was feeling today. You could make any color that you like. There's no right or wrong color. Always pick your favorites. That's what I say. And if you feel like experimenting into some other color realm, then that's great. But when you're learning, if you pick colors you already like, then you're going to be much more happy with the finished project. Save the crazy colors for after the second or third try at something when you're feeling just a little bit more frisky. So I made a wad of color. I've used my hands to get it soft. And I'm going to now press a little hole in the middle to make my donut. I usually just get any old tool that I've got lying around, poke a little hole through the middle. So then I can get this opened up in here and get my fingers in here and turn it into a nice donut shape. The warmer the clay is, the easier it's going to be to manipulate this. So if you're getting a lot of cracks in your clay, it's just because it wasn't warm enough. So just infuse your body heat into your clay and you should be fine. Another little thing is I like making these donuts kind of random shaped, not um, exactly perfect. Um, if that's not your jam and you really do prefer when things are very symmetrical, then you can use a cutter and kind of cut your shapes out and then just soften it up by hand to make it more perfect if that is something that appeals to you. I'm going with a very organic look. I don't want messy and sloppy. I don't want a bunch of dog hairs sticking out of it and beads all jammed in the wrong places. But I also am fine with it not being a 100% perfect circle. So it's that fine line between organic shape and messy. All right, so this is what I'm doing. I'm just getting my fingers in here. I'm pulling that circle open. I'm manipulating it until I get the shape I want. You can make this bigger. You can make it small. It kind of just depends upon your preference of necklace. If you've got a rather large display area, then make it large. If you're more petite and gentle and you like those tiny little small things, then make this smaller. I'm going to go a little bit bigger um, because I just feel like it but adjust accordingly. All right, so I think we've got our donut shape here. I've manipulated it by hand. I've kept it kind of thick all the way around. I've tried to make sure that all the pieces look about the same. I'm cleaning up any weird gaps, and we're looking pretty good. Now, what we want to do with this is we want to add a bunch of fancy. The very first fancy we're going to do is something that we haven't done yet in this series, and that's to use gold leaf to make like a crackle. So let's play with that. Let's put our donut off to the side, and let's talk about gold leaf for a minute. There's more than one kind of gold leaf. There's real gold, which is great, and I love it. I like to work with it all the time, but it's a little bit pricier, obviously. And also, the crackle on a gold leaf is very fine and delicate. So you may want to use an imitation gold leaf because you get a much more dramatic crackle. <coughs> so what I did is I got a little bit of a darker colored clay. This can be anything you like. It could be black. I chose a bronze because I thought that would look nice with my purple. And you roll it out into kind of a thick sheet because in order for this to crackle, we're going to have to make it a little thinner. Now, as we've talked about before, you can use a roller or you can use a pasta machine to make your sheet of clay. This is about at the thickest setting. So there's a couple of ways that you can play with this. What I like to do is just take my scissors, cut right through the carrier paper, if you can, so you can get just a little chunklet of this. Oh, that came right off. Well, that was easy. Let's lay that right on the surface of my clay. And I'm going to put a little bit more on there, too. Let's get this where you can see it. 
So I'm going to put a little bit of that on there. Let's put a little bit more. That's not enough. We need more. And cut. Put that there. Great. It does like to stick to fingers, especially if you've just put lotion on them. So be aware of that. All right, so now I have some gold leaf on the surface. I'm just patting it down so it'll stay put because it does like to go all over the place. I think that's pretty good there. If you have some leaf on top of other leaf and it doesn't stick, just scooch it off. Perfect, we can leave it just like that, but I promised you crackle, so crackle we're gonna get. I'm gonna push this through the pasta machine and let's see what it does. Okay, I went through one setting thinner and you can see how we're getting a little bit of crackle here. I'm gonna make it one setting thinner still. Oh, goodness gracious, look at that. Doesn't that look fun? You get the most delightful, ah, it's kind of like a, uh, an animal print or, um, I don't know, something fun about this. I just love it. And if you take away all this raggedy edge so that we can kind of see the crackle just by itself without the distractions of extra clay, I think you'll get a better feel for how this looks. What do you think? Pretty sweet, right? So what we're doing is we're going to take something like this and we're gonna insert strips all around our donut. And I'm gonna show you a bunch of different things that we can do to make these fun little strips. So I'm gonna cut this so that I actually get almost like a triangle. And the reason is you've got a little circle in the middle, a big circle at the end. So if it tapers a little bit, it's gonna wrap around and you're gonna have more consistent um, spacing in between each part of your donut. So I'm gonna take this and let's cut off some of this because I want to make the back side look nice too so I don't have to do anything back there to make it look finished. So I'm gonna take this and just wrap it right around so that this overlaps that. And then now look, we have our little stripe there in the front. Doesn't that look good? I think I'm gonna want more than one of those. Now what about spacing? Where do you put these things? How do you know where to put it? Here's the cool thing is no matter what you do or how you put this and the other little pieces we're gonna put on here, it's gonna look fantastic. So just go with it. Just enjoy the process of putting things on and we can fill in all the gaps. That's what our crystals will be for later or our little pearl bits or whatever other things we've got going on. We'll be able to add them all as necessary. All right, now you see what I did there? I inadvertently cut it and it's not quite close enough. So let's get another little piece in here as though I did it correctly all along. See how easy that is? And now our back looks interesting as well. Okay, so we got our crackle going on. Got that, super. You can make as much of that as you want. Keep it nice and round. As you put stuff on the back, be careful not to push too hard or it'll flatten out. Now, what about something else? Let's take a look on here. What have I got going on? <clears throat> what I've got is I've got a texture. We're gonna play with that in a minute. But I've also got something like this and this. Do you know what those are? That's using a stamp sheet or a texture sheet to press texture into the clay and then we're manipulating it with some powders and stuff, which is super exciting. So let's put this off to the side and let's try that right away. I have a little bit of clay. This is the same donut color that I've added more white to to make it in the same purpley pink family, just a little lighter toned. And I'm gonna use a rubber stamp sheet to press a pattern in. Now there's a couple ways to do this. What I like to do is make sure that there's a release on my stamp so that it doesn't like stick to my clay. Because clay can be very sticky, especially if it's brand new and it's got a lot of um, softening agent in it and it's very grabby and it can stick on that stamp pad and then you have to peel it out and it's a big pain in the neck. So there's a couple things you can do. You can give it a little spritz of water, but the problem with spritzes of water is then you have to wait for the water to dry before you can put your powders on. And that can take upwards of one or two minutes. Who's got that kind of time? I don't. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna go to my chalk powders, which you remember that we have. I'm gonna find one that's the closest color to my clay there. And I'm gonna scrape off a lot, a little of that powder. Gonna grab one of my brushes and I'm gonna put just some of that powder on the surface of the stamp where I want to stamp it. I don't want it to be a lot. I'm not trying to make a bunch of color. I'm just trying to create a release so that I can press it 
into the stamp and the clay doesn't stick on there. So I'm getting rid of my excess. I'm going to take my stamp sheet and I'm going to just press it in. Now you notice that I'm putting the clay on the stamp sheet and I'm pressing it down with fingers instead of going the other way around and pressing my stamp sheet on my clay. The reason I'm doing that is because I can kind of control it this way. I can see how much I've pushed. I can see if I'm getting the kind of coverage that I want. I can peel things off much more easily. It's just more better. All right, so now there's my pattern. So now I have a pattern. That's nice. What else can I do with that? I need to beef it up a little bit, right? Let's go back to our powders and let's get some dark color inside there. Um, what color do you think I should use? Hmm. You can write it in the comments if you think I should use a different color than I'm about to choose. Maybe if I read it before I do this, I could, oh wait, no, I can't do that. But you can write in the comments if you have other color choices. So I'm gonna go with just a darker brown. Uh, nope, I'm gonna go with a purple. Brown seems very boring now that I'm thinking about it. So let's just get some dark purple in there. And I've scraped my powder. And if you remember from others in other uh, projects in this series, how to play with the powders, we're doing the exact same trick. And I'm gonna get that in there. I am putting the powder into the cracks. It may not seem like it, but that's what I'm doing. I don't really care if it's on the surface or not. I just want it to get into all of those fun little places. That's the important part. I'm going to take it all back off again with my tape, but I've got to get it in those cracks and crevices. If you just put it up on the surface, then when you go to, with the tape to take it off, you just took it all back off the surface again. What good was that? No good. That's what. So let's get it down in the cracks. Then you just rub off the surface and peel. And remember what we talked about. You need a lot of tape for this to work. I was picking up little garbage bits there in case you were wondering what I was doing. I don't like my extra powder to get air into areas where it's not needed. Okay, one last little bit here. So all that does now is it shows you the pattern a little bit more dramatically. So that's perfect. Now let's add that to our piece. Do the same thing as we did before. Cut a little section out. And I'm still doing that little bit of a taper, although you don't have to. Now you can choose to start putting these things in even spacings all around, or you can put things close together. It doesn't really matter. I kind of am going to do a third one over here. This is that third strip over here, sort of a little balancing act there. And remember, be very careful when you're working on the back side not to squish the front side. I seem to want to cut it too short, always. Shame, shame, shame. All right, let's get that down. Put that extra piece, the missing piece, and then there we go. It's kind of like a little diaper, you know, flapping that on there. And if you do it right, the, it can be reversible. If you make that backside look cool, then that could be something you wear on that side too, if you like. I usually don't get that far. I'm lucky if the front side looks good and that's enough for me, but some of you guys might be able to get front and back at the same time. All right, so now what? We've got that little texture piece here. And on this particular one, if you wanted to, you can add just a little bit of the gold powder right over the surface. If you've put color down in the cracks by using your finger with the gold powder, it kind of highlights just the top, but doesn't get down into those cracks. So that's kind of nice. We're gonna have a large section of putting rhinestones. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, I have some other little texture bits here and some stripey things. Let's play with this, because this is a whole different thing that I think you might like. I've got this color here, which I think will look fun with everything. What I wanted to do is make a section of swirly bits, which is what I've got going on here. And all I'm gonna do with this is take little bits of this white and kind of smear it onto the surface. So I'm taking a little bit of white, flattening it out with my finger, and kind of smashing it onto the surface here. No real uh, right or wrong on this, just a couple of little spots of whiteness. And you blend it in nice and good with your finger. And then we're gonna use our tool to make some texture. I'm using a tool with a nice rounded end, and you could use something like this, or you can use something like this. It just depends on what you like better. Let's go ahead and use a ball tip tool. And all I wanna do is start making a little swirly business. Now you see all that little scrumbly bits that come up? If those sicken you, just put them somewhere else or you can press them like I did to another part of the clay. 
And let's do another little swirly over here. If there's too much white, you can scoop up some of that other color and put it in the middle. This is like painting. So it's almost like finger painting in that you're just using a tool instead of your finger and you're just swirling paint around. So satisfying. Gonna do it again over here. How fun is that? Press down those scrumbly bits as you go. We want those to be part of the design. Whee! Isn't that fun? Let's get her. Swirl, swirl, swirl. So what this is doing is not only giving you a little bit of fun color patterns, but it's also giving you an interesting texture. And what I'm doing as I go is pressing down and making some more swirls and pressing down so that we end up with a whole section here that's got stripes all along it. Now I want to make a couple of thin little pieces of this to add. I'm not going to do a big chunk like we just have done. I'm going to do a series of smaller bits. So let's cut the ends off because those are boring. And heaven forbid that we be bored. And I'm going to get a couple of little thin strips going on here. I don't know if we'll use four of them, but there they are just in case. And let's lift this one up here. Let's see, what if this one went right about in there? I think that could work for me. Let's put that there. Let's wrap it around and trim that extra. Boom. There we go. Oh, that looks good. Now let's do another one right beside it. Tuck around. The tucking around, I'm remembering to cut properly this time. That's always good. Okay, there's our second one. And you can take your time as you're going along if you want to smooth down one part of that flap for the other one to lay on top and make your back of your donut a little less bulky. You certainly can do that. So I've got two there. I'm thinking maybe another two over here would look fun. Like what about here and here? Let's tuck those around. And I think we're looking good for those. All right. Isn't this fun? Now, anytime you're creating with some of the other projects and you have leftover scraps of texture or some kind of nifty color blend that we've made, you might want to save it so that you can make it into one of these donuts. So you can use things that you've created in other projects in this way. Kind of fun that way. Okay, so now we're getting pretty good coverage here. We've got a lot of these little wraparounds going on. I'm thinking that we've got a whole big section here that will become covered with our crystals, which we'll do. Um, we want to add some of this thing that looks like little strings. We're going to have some texture. So right now, let's designate this as our crystal area. And then we'll go over here with our sort of stringy little area. And I'm going to have a little bit more of the exact same color to just make texture. I'm not introducing another color for this one. But if you have a different color and you want to wrap it around um, to create a whole other color scheme, then that is perfect too. But for now, I'm just going to wrap this around like this. So I've made a snake of clay. I'm pressing it in that area and doing our loop around. And we'll do a couple of those. And then we'll highlight it with a little bit of powders to make that really pop. Now we're going to run out of space to continue wrapping it all the way around. That's understandable because of the way we're laying things on. So now what I can just do is take these ones with a little tail and tuck that little tail right beside it and just loop those around like that. So it doesn't have to go all the way around. See what I've got? I've got that little bit of a tail there. That should be enough. Let's do a few more of those. You can completely fill that whole space with these little loopy bits, or you can have it have just a few with some openings. Both look great. All right, I'm feeling like that's wrappy enough. What do you reckon? Looks pretty good, right? If you want to, you can make that wrap look more uh, delicate as though it's composed of a lot of little strands by just using a needle tool or other tool to get in there and have some other lines. See how that makes it look like it's like more fine thread instead of big thick cord. And you know what? I can put it in this background too as though there's a lot more wraps going on over here. And I usually kind of tuck this all the way around so those little lines continue 
over the edge and look at that. See how that looks now? It looks like we've got a lot of little wrapped up area, which I love. All right, so now what have we got left to do? We've got some texture things here. We've done uh, pressing in with the stamp sheet. We've got our crackle going like crazy. Um, I think we're going to have some crystals in here, and we can put some texture in some of those other areas. Texture, texture, texture. We've got a little space right here. We might want to do something fun in there. Why don't I take a little bit of this clay that we just had, and we're just going to do something so simple. I'm going to take a little ball of clay and turn it into that kind of leafy shape that we've done before. And I'm going to make a series of those just laying one on top of the other. So there's one, there's two. Let's start with three and see what happens. Now, whenever you're laying something on top of something else, you want to start at the back and lay things on top so that you can uh, make sure that the tails of each thing are taken care of. So I'm going to wrap this around here so that this next one can lay on top and then the next one can lay on top. So you see what we've got? We've just got a little boop, 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 boop. We're going to emphasize that, emphasize the boop with some more powders. So let's get our brush at the ready and let's put a little brown in there because we had some bronze going on. Uh, let's kind of e echo that look by getting a little bit of our brown and I'm just going to tuck it right beside the end of that, just like that. Look at that. And that, see how I suddenly now everything looks um, more dimensional because that powder is giving the shadows. But I got some powder where it doesn't belong. What do we do? Tape, you know it. There we are. So see, look, immediately we've got this nice full look because of our powders. Great. All right, so texture. I'm going to put that on next, and then I'm going to leave this area for our crystals. Couple of things you can do with texture. Actually, why don't I show you this? You can use texture stamps. This is a leather making tool, and you can use any kind of texture like this. You can even make your own. This is made out of epoxy clay, and I just created my own little texture stamp. If I, if I had enough space, I could kind of get this in here and create like the look of little pebbles in here, but this one is pretty big. I don't have a lot of that space, so instead I'm going to use this thin little thing and just press in some textures right on in there, giving me something fun to look at. Let's put a little bit more of those right over here too. Now you can use anything. I uh, encourage you just to go wandering around in hardware stores, in your garage, in that junk drawer. Find anything that when you push it into the clay makes a pattern. How fun is that? So um, there can be so many things that look good. You can use little stirring straws, um, just, you know, toys. Sometimes the edges of toys have surprising textures. Just experiment a bit, see what you come up with. Then I have another little space here for texture. I'm just going to take a tool, and you could use a needle tool or a toothpick, and I'm just going to make little stroke marks, kind of like what we did over here. That will fill in that gap, too. The whole point is to make the whole piece look finished, and complete and no edges that look like you forgot about them. Everything should look intentional, like you did this on purpose. It's exactly what you meant to do all along. All right, one last little bit of texture here, and then we can move on to our crystal rhinestones. Last little bit there. What do you think? Look pretty good? Okay, now we're really looking rich here. We've got a lot of stuff to play with, and I think adding just those bits of rhinestones and a few pearls. We're going to add some uh, cultured pearls, freshwater pearls to this in a bit. Uh, but first we're going to use some just crystal rhinestones. And we got all kinds of choices to look at here. These are, as we've talked about before, you can look in that little description for links about this kind of stuff or where to refer back to in this secret series as to when I used the crystals before and learn all about them. But they are made out of glass and they have a uh, hot fix uh, backing. And I'm going to use my crystal katana to pick up the rhinestones and place them where they belong. So we're going to do these little ones here. Oh, and my eye is a spying some really big purpley ones. We're going to grab those first off. Fill in the gap with, uh, fill in the big gaps with the big stones. Now you want to make sure you press all of those in so that they have a little bit of grab into that clay and they don't go sliding off when they get in the oven because they will do that. Okay, 
Now we're going to fill in the gap. I won't fill in all of this because you don't want to just sit here and watch me put rhinestones into clay. But you get the idea. When we're all done with that, what it will look like is this. Just a big old cluster. And that's what we want. Nice cluster to cover that whole area. I'll do that later when you're not looking, all right? Okay, last thing. We're looking over the whole thing. I'm loving it, but I want just a little bit more pizzazz. So this is where our cultured freshwater pearls come in. I've got a couple of them here. I'm going to insert them in using a head pin. We've done that before. You can go back and take a look if you are unfamiliar because you don't want to miss any of this series. There's so many good things that I'm telling you, but this is one of them where we have a head pin. We've stuck it in our bead, in this case pearl, and I'm going to take this and insert it in a cool place. But where? Which cool place? All right, you see how this stamp right in here got a little wiggly? Um, sometimes this happens, and so instead of going back and trying to fix it, what if I just covered it with fanciness? Because sometimes the way to fix something is to shove something else on it. I like that method. So I'm going to shove a cluster right here because I can. So I've got a couple of these already made up ahead of time. And this looks like a great place for a little triad of pearls to be happy there. The other thing that you can do with pearls is put them out on the edge. This will not be a problem when you wear it unless it's going right where you want the cord to go. But I can also shove that in. And you notice how I am pushing this so that it embeds all the way into the clay. That's kind of one of the keys when you're adding a bead with the head pins is that you want to have that little hook, which we've talked about, and you want to shove it in enough so that the bead is actually kissing the clay because then they're going to stay put. All right? So now what have we got? We have got an absolutely lovely donut that needs more crystals over here, but just pretend that those are there, and we're ready to bake. If you've done the backside properly, this should just need, oh, maybe just a little bit of blending here and there to make it look finished, and you are done. You just bake it as it is, and you're good to go. When you bake on a tile like this, the part of the clay that touches the tile can sometimes get a little shiny. But all you need to do is take a piece of fine sandpaper after it's baked, give it a couple of little rough swooshes, and that will take a lot of that shine right off so you don't have to worry about it. All right, but if your background was super messy and garbage, which mine sometimes is, you can, after it's baked, use your liquid clay to smear around the backside, put some more fresh clay and just blend it all in. We've gone over that process before in the series as well. And that will give you a new fresh background in case you didn't get it all together the first time on your background there. All right, am I missing anything? Am I forgetting anything? I think our donut has sprinkles. It's got a little bit of drizzle. It's got all the delicious things that it needs to be amazing focal piece. What do you think about that? Pretty easy, right? And this is an ideal project to do to use scrap clay and bits and pieces from other projects. So all of those little things that you put aside because they were so pretty but you didn't know what to do with them, make some of these round focal pieces with them. Sound good? Okay, well, if you liked this, give us a like, because we like our likes. And if you want to share it with a friend who also wants to create, share it with them. We'd love that. Throw some comments in there. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It's very important that you don't miss out on any of the goodness. All right, people, have some fun going round and round and round with polymer clay. Mm -hmm.